When it comes to describing polynomial functions, we have a lot of characteristics that we can use. For example, to describe a polynomial function, we can refer to its domain and range. We can talk about its zeros, also known as its x-intercepts. We can talk about its y-intercept. We can refer to its extreme values, whether we're talking about the absolute maximum and absolute minimum values if they exist, or the local maximum and local minimum values. We could talk about a function's symmetry to describe it. That is, is the function an even function, an odd function, or does it not have any symmetry? And we can refer to a function's end behavior as well when describing it. So let's take a look using an actual polynomial function at how we can use uh, some of these characteristics to describe the function. So there's a graph of our function g at x, and we'll begin by stating its domain. Now this function continues to the left and right forever. Uh, it does not miss any x values. There's no breaks or gaps or holes or anything like that. So its domain is x is an element of the real numbers. Now this will always happen with polynomial functions. Polynomial functions never have any domain issues. There aren't any values of x that we can't use with these types of functions. So our domain is always going to be all of the real numbers when referring to the domain of polynomial functions. For this function, the range is y is an element of the real numbers. It continues upward and downward forever. It does not miss any y values. Now, the range of polynomial functions is not necessarily always going to be all of the real numbers, but in this case, it is. And we'll talk about more, uh, more about that in the future. The zeros or the x-intercepts. Well, we have three x-intercepts here. Notice we have one at negative 3.5. We have one at zero and another one at 3.5. What about this function's y-intercept? Well, it's right there at zero. Moving on, let's talk about where this function increases. Notice it starts by increasing. It increases for all x values below negative two. It also increases for all x values above two. And it has an interval of decrease from negative two to two. Just a reminder, when we talk about a function's intervals of increase and decrease, we do not include the values where it switches from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. That is, in this case, we don't include negative two or two in any of these intervals. Moving on, let's talk about an absolute maximum value for this function. Well, notice this function continues upward forever it does not have an absolute maximum value. Similarly, it does not have an absolute minimum value because it continues downward forever. Moving on, let's talk about local maximum and local minimum points. There is a local maximum point on this graph. It is right here. It has an x value of negative two, so that's where the local maximum occurs. And the local maximum value is the y value, which is four. Similarly, we have a local minimum point right here at an x value of two, and the local minimum value is negative four. Onwards, what about this function's symmetry? Does it have symmetry? It actually does have symmetry. Notice what's happening on each side of the y-axis. For the values on the positive side here, the positive x values, we have our kind of green highlighted curve. And on the left side of the y-axis, that's for negative x values, we have this orange part. Now, how do they compare? Well, what's happening on the right side of the y-axis is the opposite of what's happening on the left side, right? So for example, uh, for an x value of two, the y value is negative four, but for an x value of negative two, the y value is positive four. Right, so same value, but with opposite signs. And this happens for any x value and it's negative. And that means we have odd symmetry. In other words, g at negative x is equal to negative g at x. That is for uh, any x value and it's negative, we get y values that are the same, but opposite signs. So that's odd symmetry. And last but not least, let's talk about this function's end behavior. As x approaches infinity, what happens to y? Well, notice as x approaches infinity, our y values go up and up and up and up. So y approaches infinity. What about as x approaches negative infinity? 
Well, as x approaches negative infinity, that's kind of like we're moving leftward on the x-axis here, our y values are getting lower and lower and lower down into those negatives. So we could say that y is approaching negative infinity. So a bunch of properties there to describe this function. And we will look more closely at things like end behavior, zeros, and turning points in another lesson. Now, what is a turning point? Perhaps we should talk about that. Maybe that's a new word for you. Uh, turning points just refer to local maximum and local minimum points. It's there the points when a function switches from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Those are turning points. They are higher or lower than all nearby points, right? These are our local maximum or our local minimum points. They're the highest or lowest points in that area. And turning points are also known as local maximum points or local minimum points. We'll just restate that there. Okay, so those are some ways that we can describe polynomial functions, and we'll use this language regularly as we work with polynomial functions.